Hi, welcome to today's video. In this video, I'm going to discuss the concept of multi-head attention that was first introduced in the paper, Attention is All You Need by authors Beswani et al. So let's get started. Before we dive deeper into the concept of multi-head attention, it is important to understand what is scaled dot product attention. I had covered this concept in one of my previous videos in detail, but just to refresh our memory, I will reiterate some of the important terms. The scale dot product attention is a way to find, a, is a method to calculate attention for a given input. What it takes in is these three matrices, Q, K, and P. Q is the query, K is the key and V is the value. And then it does this operation on those matrices. They're actually, they can be, they can be more than two dimensional. Um, and, and, and then it gives us the attention. Uh, the dimensions of query K and key and value are as follows. And here you can see an example of a matrix a Q matrix for like a single sentence that has five words. Again, this is a very simple example, but in practice, the this matrix is not uh, as small as what's shown here. Now, another important concept before we move forward is self-attention. So whenever Q, K, and V are the same, then we call that attention as self-attention. All right, so these are some just basic concepts. Now let's move into multi-head attention. Okay, so what the paper introduced is that instead of calculating attention in a single step, what that means is so if we go if we go back, so if let's say we have a input which has a bunch of sentences, so it's a huge input Q K and V are big um, three-dimensional or two-dimensional arrays. So let's say we give all the entire input and ask the model to calculate attention, then that's one way of doing it. But the paper proposes that instead of, instead of doing it in one shot in, in, a single, in a single attention function, what they propose is uh, the following. So they say that we first project these inputs Q, K, and B to our lower dimension H times, and H is the number of heads, which is the parameter, hyperparameter for the transformer. So then after we project these to a lower dimension H times, we get smaller subsets of K, Q, K, and B. And then we do the scaled dot product attention on those subsets in the parallel. And finally, we concatenate the result and then perform linear projection again. And that, that, that gives us the final attention. So multi-head attention, here we still do the scaled dot product attention, attention but the way it's done is, is different. So the way, uh, uh, one more thing before we move forward is that this uh, authors found that multi-head attention gave them better performance because it allows the model to focus on different positions simultaneously because we are breaking uh, this original bigger input to smaller inputs. And now these smaller inputs uh, attention is done on the smaller inputs independently, but in parallel, so model can focus on different positions simultaneously. All right, so now there are lots of terms here like linear projection, um, uh, concatenation. So uh, it's important to go through an example to fully understand it, and that's what I'll do in the next few slides. Okay, so we'll start with a simple example. And we assume the case of self-attention, which means we will keep our Q, K, and V all the same. 
So assume that we have a single input. So we have a single sentence which has 60 words and each word is represented by a vector of length 512. So then the query Q has a dimension of 60 by 512, where 60 is the number of queries and 512 is the dimension of each of those queries. The, the uh, paper calls this 512 as D model. So this is the variable that they use to describe the dimension of the input, the original dimension of the input. Now, as I said before, we're dealing with just one sentence, but in practice, we will have a batch of sentences that we give to the model. So we will have batch size and uh, 60 by 12. Actually, this 60 could be more because we may have different words in different sentences. Uh, but just to keep things simple, I'm just dealing with one sentence. So our Q has a shape of 60 by 512, and this 512 is the original dimension of each query. And it is also called D model in the paper. All right, so now we choose number of heads, which is the hyperparameters for the transformer as eight. So we want to do a linear projection on this Q eight times. And we want to get eight sets of small Qs. And we want to do the uh, this operation scale dot product, product attention on those eight sets independently in parallel. All right, so the way we do linear projection is using dense layers. And if you recall, dense layers basically do this operation, right? So we, we do a dot product between the input that we are feeding. In this case, it will be Q and the kernel, which is a weight matrix. And then it gives us the uh, um, output. All right, so linear projection is done using the dense layers. And we do this for all K, V, and Q. And here I'm just showing you for Q, but the same operation is done for K and V. All right, so there are different ways to implement this. What I'm going to show you is the implementation uh, that is provided by the, by the um, trans transformer model in the TensorFlow. So I'm going to go over how is multi-head attention done in the original transformer model that is available in TensorFlow. And I highly encourage all of you to play with this code to fully understand the transformer model in general. So I'm going to review what is being done in this code, how we do this multi-head attention. So let's go back to our slides. All right. So we want to be able to take this original Q and we want to do linear projection eight times to get small subsets of Q. So the way it's done in the implementation in the implementation, implementation that I just showed you is, is here. So first we initialize a weight matrix of shape 512 by 512. This 512 is the same that we have the, it's, it's kept the same as that original dimension D model for the Q matrix. So that's where 512 comes from. So this is a weight matrix, which is initialized randomly in the beginning. Then we, for the linear projection, we basically apply a dense layer to the original matrix Q. And as we saw before, dense layer basically, it takes the, uh, it does the dot product between the Q and the weight matrix and activation bias. I'm, I'm le leaving a lot of details out, but um, at a very high level, it does the dot product between Q and the weight matrix. So what we get is, so if this Q is of dimension 60 by 512, and this weight matrix is, of dimension 512 by 512. And then when we do the dot product, we get something as an output, which also has a dimension 60 by 512. So we have done the linear projection and we get Q prime. This Q 
prime and Q have the same dimension at this time, but they are not the same matrices anymore because we have multiplied, we have done the dot product, right? Okay, so then our in, original goal was to break this. When, the original goal of the linear projection was to project the matrix Q to a lower dimension, H times, but we haven't done that so far. So far, we just got this Q prime, which has the same dimension as the original matrix. So what we do next is we divide this Q prime into eight chunks. Eight is the number of heads that we chose. And when we do that, when we the way we divide it is as follows. So we, uh, this is our Q prime, which has the dimension 60 by 512. The way we divide this into eight chunks is we, we, we keep the sequence length the same, but the dimension, the depth for each chunk is dependent on what is the, uh, what is the number of heads, and what was the original dimension. So basically the depth, the dimension, which we also call DK is, is decided by D model and the number of heads. So in this case, D model was 512 and number of heads was eight. So DK, which is the depth of this smaller chunks is going to be 64 in this case. So each chunk is we call it small q, and each chunk has a shape of 60 by 64. So now the query vector, the query matrix that we will be using for scale the dot product attention will be this small q, but we have eight of them because we, we our uh, number of heads was eight, so we have eight of them. So we have one, two, three, eight sets of q. Uh, matrices. Similarly, we will have eight sets of key values, eight sets of V values, and they're all derived the same way as we did for the Q. Okay, so we have done the linear projection to a lower dimension, DK, which in this case is 64. Now, what do we do next? Next, we need to do the scaled dot product attention. And the scaled dot product attention, the formula is the same uh, that we, we studied in the previous video. So the only difference is that here, this big Q, big K and big V are, are not the original uh, set of matrices, like the original input, but we have linearly projected them to a lower dimension. And what we are feeding uh, to 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 this softmax function are the lin linearly projected versions of this Q, K, and V, which is the small Q that I showed in the previous slide. So, so let's see what we get from the scaled dot product attention. So as we saw in the previous slide, the dimension of Q is 60 by 64. Because we are dealing with self-attention, uh, Q and uh, key, they they are um, they are not exactly the same because uh, their dimensions are compatible, but they are not the same. The reason is that when we do the linear projection, like the way I showed you in the previous slide, so this weight matrix that we used is not the same for for Q, K, and V. So that's why the uh, the even though the original input is the same for Q, K, and B, but we use different projection matrix matrices. So what you get out here, like Q prime and similarly K prime and V prime, they are going to be different, but they're all going to be 60 by 512. So just keep that in mind. All right, so coming back to this slide. So we have a Q that is 60 by 64, and we will have a K transpose coming out of the K prime, when we do the dot products, we get 60 by 60. So which that is just this part, okay? And then we multiply that with the val value matrix, a small v, 
uh, which is also of the same dimension, 60 by 64, and what we get is 60 by 64. So that's the dimension of the output we get from the scaled dot product attention for a single set of quer uh, query key and value. We know that we have eight, eight of these sets. So each of those eight sets, uh, we do the scale dot product attention in parallel here, eight times. And each one is going to give us 60 by 64 output, all right? So then what we do with that output is we concatenate. The way we do concatenation is we, we stack them horizontally. Right, so we 60 by 64, 60 by 64. So the after concatenation, we get 60 by 512 as the output. Then what is done is the final linear projection. So I'm not exactly sure why, why this is done and I didn't see an explanation of why this is important, but it's part of the multi-head attention and I apologize. I, I, I can't explain why this is important, the last linear layer. Uh, if you know the answer, please feel free to share. I would want to know as well. So what they do is, uh, so take this output from the concatenation and we do the final linear projection using the dense layer again, and we get the output 60 by 512. And that is the is the result of the multi-head attention. So that's the, that's the overall concept. So it's just a way of doing the scaled dot product attention, but rather than taking the original input and giving it to the softmax function, we do the linear projection, and then we, we do the scaled dot per product attention on those linearly projected uh, subsets, and we concatenate the results, and then, then we do the final linear uh, layer, and then we get the output. All right, so just to con conclude, same thing that I just said in the previous slide, so I won't repeat. Um, so four things that are happening here as shown in the diagram from the paper. Um, so that's really what it, what it has to it. I highly, highly encourage all of you to go through the code that I showed in the, uh, in the video before, and it's available here and I'll post the link below. It is from the, it's from the, uh, it's available in the TensorFlow um, documentation, freely available to explore. And I highly encourage you to go through it because you will, you will understand what multi-head attention is once you, once you get your hands dirty with the code. And that's how uh, basically I learned and that's what helped me. With that, uh, I would like to thank you for uh, making it so far to this video. And in the next video, I will discuss the complete transformer architectures. So, so we have been building upon like, what are the basic blocks of, for the transformer architecture in the last two videos. In the, in the next video, I'm going to put all of this together and we're going to understand what is a transformer architecture. So that's all for this video. And again, thank you for being here and please feel free to subscribe if you find the content on this channel helpful.